Okay, so factors affecting patient and operator exposure for your floral class. Some of the objectives that we're going to look at is list the technical factors that directly influence the exposure rate at the panel or tabletop. Define current and tube current and discuss the effects on patient exposure. Describe how kilovolts peak affect the patient exposure. Explain how collimation of the x-ray um, time affects patient exposure and recall the allowable exposure rates for image intensification with ABC and recall the allowable exposure rates without ABC and identify the types of low absorption tabletop material. So there's going to be three different sections that we're going to cover, um, four, four different sections we're going to cover here. Quickly, this should all be review for you though. So factors affecting exposure. So there are nine basic factors. So we're going to look at MA, KBP, collimation, filtration, exposure time, target to panel distance, low absorption table, and the last thing is boost. So when we talk about milliamperage MA, that's the cur tube current measured uh, of the intensity of the beam. So it's measured as quantity. Doubling the MA, as you know, doubles the expa patient exposure or dose. So the x-ray intensity is directly proportional to the MA used. Um, with your kilovolts peak, we're talking about quality of the beam. So high KVP tends to reduce patient exposure. Why? Because it lowers the MA. So as the KVP goes up, the MA goes down. So differential absorption in the patient increases as the KVP is lowered. Uh, since there's less penetration of the body parts, so it doesn't have the power to get through. So with higher KVP, slightly increases the internal organ dose, so it is um, more than offset by the mark reduction in the patient's skin dose. So as we go higher in our KVP, the, the little photons that normally get absorbed by the skin are now being absorbed in the organs. So collimation of the x-ray beam must be adjusted so an unexposed border on the input image intensifier and phosphor is visible when the image intensifier carriage is positioned to 14 inches above the tabletop and fully open. So we're supposed to be able to see the collimator. So radiation exposure rate at the input phosphor is independent of the x-ray beam size image and will not be brighter with a larger beam size. So um, volume of tissue radiated is larger, so increases patient dose. Image quality is improved as the size of the x-ray beam is reduced. Why? Scatter. When operating the image intensifier, the operator must always restrict the x-ray, <laughs> sorry, x-ray beam to the size that is practical to the examination. So increasing the size of the exposure field will increase the patient dose. So filtration, so any material placed in the useful primary x-ray beam to absorb less penetrating radiation is the definition. Uh, regulations require that the total filtration um, permanently in the useful x-ray beam not be less than 2.5 millimeters of aluminum equivalent for the image intensification. Therefore, the intensity of the x-ray beam at the tabletop should not exceed 2.2 R per minute for each MA of operating tube current at 80 kVp. And we talked about that earlier. So exposure time. Um, operator must restrict the beam on time. Doubling the exposure time also doubles the exposure to the patient because it's controlled by the operator. So if you take five looks, assuming 12 seconds per look, approximately one minute of exposure time, which translates to five R per minute of exposure to approximately 40 M R exposure to the patient per look. So Real quick look. So regulations require that a cumulative manual uh, reset timer be activated by the exposure switch, which may produce an audible signal or temporary interruption of the x-ray beam, designed to make the operator aware of the restrictive beam on time during the procedure. So six, allowable, allowable x-ray beam exposure rates are measured at the panel or the tabletop and shall be as low as practical. So exposure rates listed below um, do not apply to magnification procedures or recording of images where higher exposure rates are required. So image intensification equipment manufactured after 1974 um, with ABC or um, ABS shall not be operated at any combination of tube current and potential, so MA or KVP, that will result in an exposure rate in excess of 10 R per minute, um, where the use of beam enters the patient. 
So boost mode is a little bit different. So boost position or high level control is used. Any combination of two current and potential not to um, exceed 20 R per minute. Uh, continuous manual activation is provided by the operator and continuous audible signal to the operator shall indicate um, that the high level control is being employed. So the state of California requires when using image intensification with ABC or ABS, the operator must monitor the X-ray tube current and potential at least once a week with a designated phantom of 9 inches of water or 7 7 eighths of lucite in the X-ray beam during the use to ascertain that the x-ray tube is in normal range for its giving set of operating parameters. It's in bold because you need to know it. Okay, so moving forward here, um, your target to panel distance. So shorter the target to panel distance results in greater skin dose to the patient and greater distortion of the image than a longer target to panel. So your TPD increasing from 12 to 18 inches, so 12 is the minimum and 18 is what's recommended. The skin entrance exposure is reduced by approximately 30%. So here in bold, this is straight from um, your syllabus. The state law and the Bureau of Radiologic Health, so RHB, require that the target to panel or target to table distance should not be less than 18 inches and shall not be less than 12 inches. So your low, low absorption tabletop, so it needs to be, uh, it's typically made of carbon fiber uh, tops and they reduce the patient exposure, so um, that's what they typically use. And high level boost, uh, fluoroscopic uh, refers to a special activation system that provides a higher tube current. So it goes um, so from 10 to 20 MA and in some instances all the way up to 40 MA. As you remember, we go, we typically are between one and five, but typically two to three MA is normal. So we're kicking it all the way up to 10 to 20 and all the way up to 40 MA at times. So the interest dose rate is two to 10 times higher. So 10 to 50 rads per minute, the tabletop. It's used for visualization of small catheters or little vessels. Um, so the maximum uh, tabletop dose rate for boost is 20 rads per minute. And special activation at the control panel is required. What we talked about, audible signal must be heard from the room when you're in high level boost. And tabletop dose rate is limited to 20 R per minute unless recording devices are used. So basic operational procedures. So um, the goal here, we need to reduce radiation. So operators of fluoroscopic equipment must reduce unnecessary radiation dose to the patient themselves and others by observing and following these operational procedures. And they tell you exactly what they are. So there's 21 ways to reduce dose and this should be familiar to you. So minimize beam on time by using short looks. So the eye integration time, remember that? It's about 0.2 seconds. Um, so you can just do real quick looks. Employing a cumulative manual reset time for actual time activated by the exposure switch. So there needs to be alarm to sound not exceeding five minutes and should be displayed on the monitor also. Um, use the highest KVP and the lowest MA. Typical is two to three, what we talked about. So restricting the beam to the smallest or collimating to the area of interest. Um, selecting the largest field of view coupled with the smallest manual collimated field size and automatic collimation is not selected. Um, collimation usually, um, so shutter the blades, um, should be visible on the monitor. You don't just leave it wide open. So number five, maintaining the radiation dose rate as low as um, practical but not exceeding five rads per minute for a typical 150 pound patient. So the, the typical, the range is from one to five. Rads. So use the magnification and operation uh, and optional high level measures only when absolutely necessary. Using last frame hold techniques or video storage methods of electronic radiography whenever continuous exposure is not absolutely necessary. And using uh, photo spot film cameras with film sizes of 70, 100, 105 rather than spot film cassettes, um, pretty outdated. Using videotape recording if there is a need for later viewing of image analysis. We do that with our swallow function videos. Number 10, using digital photospot recording with dose saving characteristics of photospot cameras with uh, instantaneous viewing. Using only image intensifiers that can provide adequate contrast, so brightness gain and contrast gain must be tested and not less than annually to ensure that they're proper. 
So number 12, using television camera and monitors or mirror optic systems. Um, direct viewing systems should not be used. Wow, I don't even know if those exist. Um, daily monitoring and adjusting controls on the television monitor for brightness and contrast. Um, minimizing the patient image intensifier distance. Number 15, prior to the exposure, position the anatomical area of clinical interest to the center of the image intensifier and give clear instructions to reduce patient motion. So you got to talk to your patients, make sure they understand what you're doing. Use gonadal shield whenever possible, especially with kids. And um, we're going to talk about pediatric fluoroscopy uh, soon. Reduce the light in the room so that the image on the monitor is brighter. And use appropriate compression devices when indicated. Um, so if you can use them, it helps compress the tissue so it's less tissue to uh, be radiated. Handling of films of cassettes carefully to eliminate any kind of artifacts on them so you don't have any repeats. And moving the under table cassette holder if equipped to the other end. So a lot of you when you did your lab were like, what's this metal thing that I'm looking at? What's in my image? It's your bucky tray. So slide it to either the head or the feet so it's not in your way. All right, so there's a couple more if we're just dealing with mobile fluoroscopy equipment. So in addition to the 21 items above, mobile florals should um, include at least um, the following eight items. So an audible indicator when radiation is being produced, uh, fluoros <laughs> fluoroscopy time accumulator, which incorporates a digital display into the video display, analog and digital video storage systems. Um, they need to have a last frame hold feature that will allow the fluoroscopist to view a static image for as long of a period without using continuous fluoro, and the longest possible cone to increase uh, the source to skin distance. Sterile wraps um, when you're in the OR, so when you need a sterile field, you need to be able to wrap the unit. And there needs to be a waterproof protective wrap under the portion um, of the x-ray system that's going to be under the table that could possibly get wet. And properly functioning locks, which must be secured during um, use of floor equipment. So you need to make sure that all the locks work and you're supposed to actually use them and not leave it unlocked while you're using floral. So I'm going to stop there and we're going to pick up um, going through floral and mobile.